Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome to Art Club today. Um, let's see what we need. So have you got your unopened art pack with you? Um, then your other materials, the usual kind of materials. We've got a pair of scissors. Sellotape will actually be quite handy possibly today. Some Pritt stick or PVA or hobby glue. And then your usual colours, markers, crayons, mar whatever you like to use basically to make, um, to, to draw with. And let's have a chat first before we start. And I'll show you some pictures um, and we'll see then what we're going to make. This is what we're going to talk about today. Can anyone see anything unusual in this photograph? Is it a photograph? It's quite hard to tell. Is it a drawing or a photograph? So we are going to talk about fairies. This is actually a photograph that was taken 100 years ago by two young people, Elsie Wright, who was 16, and Frances Griffiths, who was only nine. And they used to go playing at a stream, their cousins, and they um, played with fairies in the garden. And they were um, playing in the garden with the fairies and they brought a camera and they managed to take this photograph. So while this happened 100 years ago, cameras were quite different then. It was quite difficult to operate a camera, but they managed it. There was, they made the news and they were the newspapers. Everyone was extremely excited and perplexed and amazed and thought, is this real or not real? Um, is it a hoax? Did this really happen? And people kept asking that question their whole lives. When they were old ladies in their 80s and 90s, they still had newspapers coming to them, asking them to tell the story again and what happened. And right until the last day, they said, we really did see fairies. We really did um, play with fairies in the garden. So I've always been really interested in this photograph and their story. That happened in England. Um, in, in Ireland, we have lots of stories of fairies and you might know some things about them. So on this image is some ideas of places where you might see them or feel their presence, or you might've heard stories about them in these places. Um, we have a lot of fairy forts and fairy mounds in Ireland, which is a ring of trees, which no farmer or anybody would dare to touch because it belongs to the fairies. So if you're driving, um, you might see them from the road. You might look out into a field and see a ring of trees, or you might live somewhere where there's one near you. You know, we have um, participants in our club from all over Ireland, so I've no doubt you guys might have seen these before. And one of the trees that's really particularly associated with fairies is called the hawthorn tree. And there's a photo of it here. It's May now, and this is the time of year when that tree has loads of beautiful white flowers on it. And there's a photo there of the flowers you can see. They're really teeny tiny, beautiful flowers. It looks almost like snow all over the tree. Um, and the reason um, why this is important is because, because this tree becomes in flower in May, May became associated with a really uh, special time for fairies, really active time. And there's lots of different traditions in May about things to do about fairies and um, they've been passed down from generation to generation. So um, the Horton tree is thought to be kind of like an entry uh, door into the fairy world um, and it's really bad luck to bring it into your house but it's very good luck to tie a piece of ribbon or a piece of um, material to it and to ask the fairies for help and protection or for good 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 things to happen for you um, and it's a way of kind of um, communicating with them in some way. So some of you may have tried this before, or you may have even once seen a tree that had loads of rags tied on it and wondered what that was about. So here's an example of some children tying some pieces of material to a tree at the Hill of Tara. Um, and that looks really lovely, doesn't it? So um, you can even do this at home. If you have a tree that you feel is quite special, you can tie charms and gifts and bits of materials to it um, for the fairies. So because I love fairies and I've often gone looking for them, I have a friend and she lives out in the west of Ireland in County Clare. Um, and she lives in this house. You can see it buried here in all the trees and all the wilderness. And in her garden, she actually has got a fairy ring. Um, and a somebody had been quite bold and torn down the trees and thrown in lots of rubbish. So for the last few years, she's been tidying it up and replanting all the special fairy trees. And we went down there, which was very exciting, to leave some gifts for the fairies. So we made some charms and, and made some letters and we brought them down. And here you can see down the very bottom what it looks like, a big hole in the ground. And you can see that the lady standing at the very top and you can see how high it is. It's a really deep, deep um, hole in the ground. And the lady who's standing at the very top 
had a very special relationship with fairies and she said that in her garden in the north of Ireland she's always had fairies living down the end of that garden and she goes to talk to them all the time now she doesn't necessarily see them but she just feels that they're there and they're a good friend of hers so she can tell them if she's not feeling great or share news with them and um, she likes to go down there quite a lot um, today we are going to make you might have guessed fairies so they come in all shapes and sizes everyone is unique they might have their own powers they have their own names and stories um, this is the one I made most recently and you might have an idea of how we make it but let's have a look um, at our materials in our art pack and see what we make of those okay in the art pack there is a wooden bead this one with a hole through it there is pipe cleaners you have a furry set and a sparkling set there is some tinsel silver tinsel like this very fine uh, there is also maybe something like this some shiny materials and some possibly colored possibly white wool or embroidery thread and one of our favorite things a stick on gem like this one and you might also find a button or two maybe three each pack is different and a pom-pom so the pom-pom has a little glue dot stuck onto it which will make things easier for us as we go so let's put those materials to the side apart from we're going to start with our pipe cleaners and our wooden bead so we'll put the rest to the side and let's start here Okay, so to make the fairy body, it's if you have a look at these, you can kind of see what we've done is made it out of pipe cleaners and the thread is then wrapped around to make a kind of outfit and to make it nice and strong. Then we've tied on some sparkling tinsels, pom-poms, some gems um, and decorated each one uniquely. This one you can see I added a flower from the garden. Um, because it's pipe cleaners and they are bendable and shapeable, they can hold on to things for you, keep things spe special things safe. So for example, with this one, there's a piece of sea glass inside here, which I found on the beach. Um, you might have a favorite pebble or something that you might like to keep with your fairy. So having had a look at those, let's see. Um, the wooden bead for the head, the pipe cleaners for the bodies, and then everything else just kind of attached on. To make the body, with your sets of pipe cleaners, you want to find the soft set, so not the tinsel set, and this is going to be the legs and the arms. Take the, if you have two and you find that ones, they're pretty much the same size on mine, but if you find one's a bit longer than the other, take the shorter one. Um, I'm just going to take one of these. Um, then you have your wooden bead. Attach this on by stringing it through the pipe cleaner, like that, till you kind of get to the center. You can bend this down and when you fold it across like that, you then do a twist. So the, the main action with pipe cleaners to attach them together is a twist. So you might need some support at home to get started on that to kind of see how it works. Um, so do ask for help if you need. But one more time, we have strung the pipe cleaner through the bead about halfway. Then we bend this down we take it down to the bottom like that and we do a twist. So one goes over the other and a little twist. And that you can see is starting to make the body. We've got the head and we've got the arms. Then for the legs, take your other soft pipe cleaner and bend it kind of into a U or a V. Then you're gonna place that over here, kind of over the shoulders of your fairy and pull the legs down a bit. And you can see already that you kind of have two legs, but to secure it on, you're gonna do the same again, pinch them and do a twist and even just one or two twists and everything will be attached together like that. The um, tighter you do the, the twist, the more secure it's going to be. So that's a pretty good start. Um, this is the basic body for the fairy. So this is very important. So if you need to pause and go back, do that and take your time. It's a new, might be a new skill for some of you. Um, and for others, it might just be something that might just take you a bit of time. That's fine, take your time. Then we're gonna do the wings. So 
The wings are, now that you know how to do your twisting, um, quite simple as well. You're going to bend one of the sparkly pipe cleaners into a circle or an oval. Now, it doesn't have to be too perfect. So just bend it like that. You'll find that it does that naturally, just kind of bends for you. And then you have your two ends and you're just going to kind of fold one over and this one over kind of almost like a twist again until they are attached together like that. So again, you can pause, take your time, ask for help if you need. Once you have your circle, you're gonna pinch that and you can see you've almost got two wings here now and you're gonna do a twist, another twist. And there you have it. So I might do one more twist just to make sure that's nice and secure. And that's my wings twisted together. So you have your fairy in your body and you have your wings. The next piece that would probably be a good thing to go for would be your wool or embroidery thread. So you can unwrap that a bit, turn it into just a long piece of string for yourself. And the first thing I want to do is attach on my wings. So I'm gonna put them where I want them to be. Just about there on the back. You might decide your fairy's wings are somewhere else or maybe your fairy doesn't have wings. So what you're gonna do is just start cross wrapping the thread in all different directions across like that. See the way you're just wrapping it in different directions across and around and behind in no particular order till you have them basically kind of secured on like that. And then with your thread, you can keep on wrapping. So here's an example just to show you what we're kind of trying to achieve where I've made with wrapping, I've made a pair of yellow trousers um, and this one has a whole suit on of wrapped thread. So you can take this piece of long thread and just keep going. So I'm gonna do that now and I might speed up the video with this part. And there I have my fairy with its arms, its legs, and it's wearing a white suit in this case. And I think I might use some markers and color that in. The bead or the button that you have, you can string it on if you like, and you can um, kind of thread the pipe cleaner through it. I think for this one, I'm gonna make it into a shield. I think this might be a bit of a protection fairy. Um, some people had a lovely idea that they would make a protection fairy with a shield that would um, sit beside them at their bed or hang above their bed. So this is my little protection fairy with his shield or her shield. I think it's a him, this one, for some reason. Um, and I'm going to then, um, you can use your markers and pencils to color it in, to draw on it. I'm gonna draw a face and I'm gonna color in, I think some of the thread and some of the pipe cleaner as well. And then I might have a look at all these sparkly bits and pieces. For these bits, you can just tie them on. Um, or if you have sellotape, you might use a bit of sellotape to help you with that. Um, let's speed up this part and I'll do a bit of making and I'll show you what I've done. So I think I am pretty much finished with this fairy. So you can have a look at it here. Um, I've attached the button onto its arm to be the shield like I had thought, thought of as an idea to be a kind of protection fairy and there is a gem on it so it's extra magic. I knotted this on just with some tying um, and the same with this thread as well and um, I've done some colouring and done the face so I think I'm pretty much happy with this one now. Um, I think I'll finish it there and um, yeah let's compare it to the others. They're quite different aren't they? Each one is really different, really unique. Once you've made one you can think about what its name might be, what its special power might be, or powers, um, what kind of a character is it, does it have its own story, was it enchanted by somebody, um, how old is it, and then you also need to think about where is your fairy going to live. Will your fairy live in your house or your garden or maybe the local park? Um, do you have a special fairy place already? and maybe this could go with it. Do you have a fairy door or something like that or a special place somewhere? Um, and so you might even like to draw somewhere for it to live or build something out of a cardboard box. So there's lots and lots of options. You can um, create more friends for it and you can keep on building and building and building um, and making new ideas. 
So whenever you feel up to it or if you'd like to share your work, please do. And you can just email in photos and it's really great when the group can see everybody's ideas being shared and get new ideas and be inspired.